Hey guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, today I just want to show you how to diagnose an ABS sensor and I'll show you the difference between using a scope and using a multimeter because they are both doable but you will get different results. Okay, so we've got a Toyota RAV4 here. Um, fault code for a left hand rear wheel speed sensor and just quickly I've gone for a test drive with the scan tool and yes, there's no output from that sensor. All the other three are reading fine. So, we look in the back here, I, I looked underneath, the, the sensors go into the hub and they um, read off of the, the bearing and then there's no connector until you get inside the car. So when we pull the back apart, these are our two connectors. So we've got left hand rear wheel speed sensor and right hand rear wheel speed sensor. This is our guy that we're suspecting is at fault, but I'll show you how we can test it, compare it to even a known good one and um, that'll, that'll give us a confirmation. So firstly, if we take a look over at the, the scope that I've got set up here, um, I've got it on where I'll usually start. So I've got one second per division. That gives us 10 seconds across the screen. You can see it's very slow. And I've put 20 volts there to start. So we've got 20 volts on the screen. We just want to see what we're, we've got on this circuit because being an active wheel speed sensor, there's going to be a voltage supplied from the, the ABS module. And then it's going to go through the sensor. It will basically manipulate it and then it travels back to the module. So at the moment, you'll see that I've got back probes in the right hand um, rear and I've just back probed into both the wires and I've done the same over there just to make it easier for our, our little video testing. So I'm going to connect my scope now into those back probes. I've got the ignition on by the way and so all going well we should have 10 volts here. You'll see that I've gone to negative 10 volts so if we go back just so you can see where I've plugged in so I plugged in at this point negative 10 volts if I was to swap that around the you know the um, the connectors um, put it the reverse polarity would get positive 10 volts it really doesn't matter all we're looking for at this point is 10 volts if you like I'll put it the other way just so that it's not confusing for you so we're back in now and I mean if we go back you'll see where I've unplugged plugged back in we've got reverse polarity so that's fine that's our first test we want to make sure on this case we've got 10 volts by the look of it there's 8 volts there's 12 volts so 10 right in the middle the system can use whatever it wants but that's good that we've got that I'm just gonna quickly go and spin the wheel so I'll get Frank to focus on the screen here and when I spin the wheel so we should have some output on that sensor we can see here and if I wanted to I could go into great detail with that where I could zoom right in and we would start to interrogate if the bearing had any failures in it right so we could see all these little spots here if we saw one that looked a bit odd we could zoom right in and we can say okay look you've got a problem in the in the magnet and the bearing this looks fine to me um, to show you what it'll look like on a multimeter i'm going to disconnect the scope and i'm going to plug the multimeter into those same connectors so i'll get frank around here to focus on the multimeter got it just there so right now we're on dc Have 10 volts there. 8.9. Yeah, right, so that's our first test, and that's a good test. Okay, I may not have a good connection now, I'll just double check it. It's as good as 8.8. 8. Sure. So this may even run 9 volts down to it. You know, it's, it's hard to say, but I mean, the main thing is we can see that there's something there. Then when I spin the wheel, you see. Mm -hmm. We're getting a very slight change, you know, but you could not tell me if that's got something wrong with a magnet or anything. There we go, we're getting to our 9 there, so I'd say I just don't have a great connection. I reckon it should be 10 volts. You can see it changes, right? I'm spinning the wheel again, but you can't give me much detail. So, yeah, you could say the sensor is doing um, something, but you couldn't tell me anything about the bearing. We could change that and we could put it on AC voltage instead. So now on AC we've got nothing, and as I spin the wheel, we'll get an output. Right, again, the sensor's working. Can't tell anything about the bearing, but I can tell you the sensor's working and now that thing's gone to a stop. Now, still a valid test if you don't have a scope, so as long as you, you know that it is a valid test. And by getting that 10 volts, you've also confirmed the integrity of the circuit from the module up to the sensor. Now, if we go to the dead, well, suspected dead sensor in this case, I'm going to take my scope. We're gonna plug it in just the same that we did on the good one. And if we go up to our scope, we should at least see 10 volts there if the module isn't failed. Again, we've got negative 10 volts. I could flip that around, no real reason to. Um, and if I spin the wheel, not an iota. Mm. So that's with the wheel spinning, so nothing happening. So 
because I've back probed in, I can see the 10 volts coming from the module. I'm going through the, the module to get back. You know, I've got my two wires there, and so it's, it's come down from the module, gone across that, and I'm using the earth in the module. So I know that those two wires and the module are good. It's got to be the sensor that's bad, right? The other option would be if I did this test and I did not see that 10 volts there, then we're heading backwards. You know, We've either got a break in the wire before the sensor or quite commonly we can have a module that doesn't output voltage. So I've had several cases where you would work back. I would back probe directly into the module. If I still don't have my 10 volts, um, make sure you clear the code, cycle the ignition because some of them won't give you your, your voltage until they're happy that they don't have a code set. So make sure you do that and, and check that it doesn't come straight back. Um, give the module a bit of a tap, you know, give it a wiggle, heat it up, and you might see it coming in and out. That's, that's a bad module, right? But in this case, pretty slam dunk, we've got a, um, a bad sensor. And as you can see, you can test it with a, a multimeter, but a scope's definitely the right tool for the job. Thanks, guys.